You know, I've talked about it in the Discord, I've talked about it in live streams, and I could have sworn I said I would never make a video on the topic because there's no need. Why do we even need to talk about it? It's such a simple concept. Never mind. The micronational community once again has proven me wrong, and it's time to talk about representative currencies versus fiat currencies as an important measure of micronational success. These are two different schools of thought that have been going on for longer than micronations have been around. It is something that is intrinsic to the concept of uh, economic theory itself. And this is based on the concept of whether or not you should back your currency with some physical item like gold or silver or oil or food or anything else. And I want to tell you, for micronations in particular, but for all nations in general, fiat currencies are better long term for stabilizing an economy and for building an economy than a representative currency or a currency backed by something could ever be. If you don't know much about the history of money, that's something that's really important to talk about in this topic. If you want to learn more about it from actual experts, people much more versed than I, definitely go check out the extra credit series on the history of money. I watched it. That's how I learned a little bit about this topic uh, and also what got me started further in economics dealing with micronations. I've you know done more economic research now that I have been a part of micronational but that was one of my uh, introductions to the concept of economics and how to digest economic theory a little bit better. That all being the case, what does this have to do with your micronation whatsoever? Well, if you're deciding to start a micronation, more than likely you've either heard or done yourself going out and pegging your currency to some physical item, gold, silver, whatever. Oh, bro, you have to back your currency with something. That's what's going to give it value because people feel like they have some little hack that they figured out where, oh, people don't want to accept my nation's currency that they've never heard of. So what I can do is I can attach it to some item like gold or silver and say, you can redeem this for a certain amount of gold or silver. And then that gives it intrinsic value that people are going to want to rush to buy from you, rush to use your currency because now it has that value that everyone knows and accepts, right? It's not that simple. When we talk about value with something, it is someone's belief in that thing that gives it that value. It's the same reason that gold or silver has its values because people use it. It is functional. It's something that has benefits to their everyday lives. And so you would think it's obvious and natural to connect that to our concept of money. In the history of money, that is actually how money paper money, fiat money, like we understand now, uh, ultimately came to be, with its predecessor being something called representative money or something that is backed by something. Now, when people used to trade gold and silver and other precious metals to each other for goods and services, they did so because everybody wanted it, because it was something that was easily understood as valuable. And so they would carry around these large amounts of precious metals, and those precious metals would get lost, get stolen, when traders were going across seas or when they were fighting with other countries and things, they are fighting bandits. There were so many ways that your investment in those goods could be lost entirely or very certainly partially. So when these traders are losing all these things, they decide, let's go ahead and stash our valuables somewhere for safekeeping. And then those people who were storing their valuables for use later said, well, you're storing so much. Why don't I just give you an IOU? And that way, whenever you come back and you want to get your things, you can just say, hey, I have 20 pounds of gold here. Uh, my name's so-and-so and I need that 20 pounds of gold. Uh, and you can hand them that IOU, that receipt, and they'll give it to you. This worked well. And eventually these traders decided, well, hold on, instead of me carrying large sacks of gold and silver and large, uh, you know, shiploads of gold and silver, I can just bring these IOU notes. And so long as the people that I'm trading with can get back to where I have my gold, they can actually trade it out to get that gold back and so people instead started trading these iou notes and that's what we have come to understand as paper currency as that representative currency it represents a value of some physical item the problem with that is that let's say there are two scenarios which could make that absolutely devastating for an economy. Scenario one, let's say all of a sudden the world supply of gold quickly dwindles. There's very little left and your nation is fortunate enough to be one of the ones that has a large supply because you thought ahead and you stocked up. Well now, 
all of the people that you had originally traded one of your dollars to have their gold stored with you uh, is going to be rushing to get it because they initially gave you a small amount of gold or took a small amount of labor out of their time and effort to be able to get this thing which is worth so and so amount of gold so now they've gotten a little bit of work that gave gave them that dollar that now can be traded for something that is super valuable and worth a lot more than the work that they initially put into it and so when they go to get that the government itself the community that has pulled together those resources in order to have that valuable commodity is now at a net negative for the amount of growth that it has been able to produce it has a loss it has a debt that it owes to those people and that is a huge huge problem so this is where that can become incredibly dangerous the united states learned this lesson in the 1930s with the great depression which is exactly why it removed itself from the gold standard people were hoarding gold so much in their homes that they didn't want to let it go and the value of gold skyrocketed plummeting the u.s economy it was a huge huge issue for the longest time people didn't feel secure and it was something that hurt the u.s government and in turn the u.s economy's ability to benefit its citizens this is a worry that you should have as a micronational next we're dealing with hyperinflation the concept that what if all of a sudden gold becomes super commonplace let's say a billionaire goes into space uh grabs a asteroid uh, in his rocket crashes it down onto earth and it's full of gold well now gold is nearly worthless it's something that you cannot uh really trade or exchange as any means of reasonable value now that you've done that all of the currency that you have traded for that and have built up your stockpile with is now worthless so your economy has tanked again in another surprising turn of events this is exactly the opposite of the thing that made my economy tank the last time what's the problem now the problem is now all of that work all of that thing that everybody did trade for the gold has now become considered worthless it's another huge problem that you should be concerned about and it's something that is very very hard to deal with in either case with a representative currency. The reason for this is because with a representative currency, the power of the currency, the ability to regulate its value is completely out of your hands. And so if you're someone who doesn't trust the government, you would say, oh, well, this is the perfect reason to have that standard. This is why we need it back, is because the government can't be trusted to be able to make those kinds of decisions. It's not filled with experts on the subject. And so we need to have something that is concrete, that I know how much value uh, my, my dollar is worth, that's worth the amount that the market has set in gold but ultimately that is something that will not work for micro nations this is something that will not work for macro nations and they've learned their lesson it's time for us to learn it as well